Ferrari isn't playing it safe when it comes to 2026 on any account. For example, in the last couple of videos on the 2026 Ferrari project, labelled 678, we discussed the unique and revolutionary changes that they're making to their 2026 F1 engine, which does come with many risks. And it's not just that change that has finally started to come to the public domain in terms of news. We're talking about a brand new chassis already in production, a suspension overhaul so extreme it hasn't been seen on the Ferrari car since the F10, inverted wrist McLaren style aggressive aero geometries, and for Leclerc and Hamilton, they've already tested these insane changes in the simulator. This is Ferrari's first true car under Loic Serra, and he's not being conservative, this is a revolution. So let's get into why the 2026 Ferrari could either save the team or blow up spectacularly for them. And to begin with, let's discuss the chassis of the 26 car. It is in fact actually being built currently and Ferrari already has it locked in. Production on this chassis, according to Auto Racer, has been going on for many, many weeks now with power unit placement, gearbox dimensions, the suspension mounting points, the cooling layout, crash structures and aero surfaces of that first initial chassis already in place. So this is the opposite of the cautious incremental Ferrari that we've seen in recent years. They're going all guns blazing, wanting to hit the, the ground running. Now, as I alluded to in the intro, this thing that they have not done on a Ferrari car for over a decade is of course the front and rear suspension being both a double push rod. The last time that occurred was on the 2010 car which they came ever so close to winning the world championship with, with Fernando Alonso with the F10. Now let's break down why this matters. So a front push rod which we expected but it's going to be very aggressive. Now this really doesn't come as a surprise particularly after all of the difficulties they faced in this final year of the ground effect era with a poor rod front suspension. It never really yielded the results they wanted and as a result of that they've gone back to what is tried and tested and they know how to make work. But the upside of this is what Loic Serra has actually asked to be created with this now push rod front suspension and he's demanded an extremely aggressive geometry which will be reportedly inspired by McLaren's MCL 39 from this particular season we're currently in. Of course as we saw with the pull rod front layout on the McLaren it is very much the same design of Ferrari but for one major difference and that is the extreme geometries that they incorporated within it all to do with anti-dive. They took it to a level which has not really been seen in F1 at any point in time before. It's what's given them quite a bit of an advantage at the beginning of this season. Now, this all means, for example, it's going to have a much higher anti-dive, more extreme pickup points, and of course, an aerodynamically cleaner suspension arms, which of course will help with the aero of the car overall. On top of that, it's going to, of course, help the airflow in and around the side pods and floor edges. Now, the real bombshell from this video is, of course, then reverting to a push rod rear suspension. Again, what I've said before, not seen since 2010 on the F10. And what's even more radical about this, they're going to invert the wishbones compared to recent Ferrari rear suspension. So, Essentially, this means new load paths, a completely new rear aero wake, new gearbox casings, new structural layouts, and new kitematics. With this, of course, bringing a completely and brand new aero map for the 2026 car as a result. It's a major undertaking for a team to go from what they've done for many, many seasons and it takes a lot of work, even though they've got a lot of technical know-how and experience doing that. Uh, so they've no doubt spent a lot of time through CFD and in the wind tunnel with this design, and they've seen this is the best route 
with the overall package they're going to be producing. And Ferrari also want to take a leaf out of McLaren, not only with the suspension as we've been discussing but the overall aerodynamics and the philosophy behind it. They want to have extreme solutions much in the same way the MCL 39 in 2025 has. This means Sarah has reportedly instructed both the aero and suspension departments to explore the McLaren style ultra high anti-dive, alongside that to incorporate high anti-squat geometries into their suspension systems. On top of that, they want to have sweeped wishbone geometries and extreme suspension rod angles. Now, why would this be? Well, because their shapes manipulate airflow. Suspension isn't just a mechanical thing you have to think about. There is also a trade-off on the aerodynamic front. So Ferrari want to return to the cutting edge of this level of technology and detail, something they haven't had for many seasons. And they don't want to trail behind Red Bull and McLaren in this aspect. Now, this of course means that there is a bigger margin for error to come from this. If they get some of the suspension uh, designs and components and layouts wrong, it is going to take a huge overhaul in 26 or into 27 to rectify and fix that issue. And that could mean throwing potentially away a season if it is that big of a issue. But with past know-how and the skills and knowledge and technologies having been used before, being transferable to a degree in 26, it really shouldn't be out of the ballpark of what for uh, Red Bull and McLaren will be doing with their designs and therefore it shouldn't be that major sort of risk as I've just discussed. And above all of this what is really interesting and will come as no surprise both Charles Leclerc and of course Lewis Hamilton have been at Maranello in the simulator testing and trialing out all of the things we've discussed thus far in the video. And according to internal sources, the feedback is extremely positive. But you have to take that with a pinch of salt because that is internal feelings up against, say, the SF25 of this season and not in regards to competition and what they're doing. So while it may feel good in comparison to what they've driven, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the standard bearer in 2026. Far from it, actually. But if there's one thing Ferrari generally seem to get right is when there is a technical change, they do generally hit the ballpark running from the beginning of that regulation cycle, even if they don't go on to dominate or win any championships. And there is very much a trend that we've seen happen. In 2017, that was the case They came out strongly out of the gate with Vettel and Raikkonen with the Ferrari cars in 2017 and 2018, even though they didn't win anything. And the same case happened in 2022 with this ground effect error. So there is confidence to be taken from that, that they start new regulation cycles off on the front foot and very strongly. It will be about making sure they don't lose their rate in the development path through 26 with changes in terms of layout design, suspension components, aerodynamic avenues, and they don't go down the wrong route. And this all is backed up by Fred Fisser's message internally that he's sending to the Ferrari personnel, and that is to be brave. No more half measures. Be courageous, be adventurous. They're trying to harbour and foster a working atmosphere which is creative and not confined by the shackles of yesteryear. If they can do that and they can be more collaborative between the departments and not point fingers at when things go wrong, it's going to enable a, a bigger collaborative advantage between all of the departments, and this will bring a much better Ferrari Formula One product out onto the racetrack. 
So in rounding up, what does this all mean for 2026? Well, Ferrari's project now includes a new chassis, which is currently undergoing preparations for the FIA crash tests, a double push rod layout in terms of suspension with inverted rear wishbones, aggressive aero mapping, and there is of course early simulation validation. It's a high risk, high reward strategy in terms of their power unit, which is being led by a cultural shift thanks to Fred Vasseur. Now, this is all good news to hear if you're a Ferrari fan. I think this is a better kind of route for them to go down and it could pay off big time at the beginning of this new regulation cycle in 2026. And only time will tell whether that actually comes to fruition. 